in the tradition of Malcolm X. Peace be unto you. I want to take a few minutes and talk to you about something that I think is significant and something which is usually overlooked by most of us on a day-to-day basis, and that is the words we choose to use to express our ideas to other people. You cannot just mimic what other people say. You can't assume that the words they use carry truth. Nor can you just pick up a book, read it, and think you know something at all because the chances are you don't. For instance, whenever you read or hear someone say, man, M-A-N, I think you should stop and really think about what you are saying. Because when you say that word, you are promoting a race mythology which comes directly from Hinduism. You are also reinforcing in your subconscious a belief in idolatry. I understand that the pronouns man and woman are commonly used throughout all European history. It is part of the European and American mythological heritage, even though nearly 100% of people in Europe, the United States, and Latin America do not know what they are saying. So subconsciously, they reinforce the racism which smothers their souls. We are in a world today which is increasingly a war for the minds of the people. There was a book written by Gustav Le Bon who wrote the classic book on crowd psychology. The book is entitled The Crowd, A Study of the Popular Mind. He said concerning the 80% of the masses, and I quote, the masses have never thirsted after truth. They turn aside from evidence that is not to their taste, preferring to deify error, if error seduce them. Whoever can supply them with illusions is easily their master. Whoever attempts to destroy their illusions is always their victim. End quote. So think of all of the people in history who have come with clear messages. Clear messages. I mean the bona fide truth. And count how many of them were martyred, murdered by the masses. All of the languages of Europe and thus the United States and Latin America are Indo-European languages. That means that their languages derive from a common root language traceable to an ancient Central Asian tribe called the Yamnaya out of Central Asia about 5,000 or so years ago. Don't take that 5,000 precisely because no one knows the precise time that the Yamnaya came out and started conquering large parts of Asia and Europe and the subcontinent of Asia. It could have been 6,000 years. It could have been 4,900 years. But you get the point. We're talking about the origin of the Indo-European language family. First, let's, let's define the term man. How is the pronoun man and woman defined according to any standard dictionary. Pretty much a standard dictionary definition of the pronoun or pronouns man and woman will state that man is a male gender human being, woman is a female gender human being. However, the root of the pronoun man and woman derives from the ancient Aryan Sanskrit word manu. M-A-N-U. In other words, the word man or one man has a long history, a long trajectory 
to the course of history, to the present, and is rooted in the Aryan, which is the word used in India to designate the class or caste of people who consider themselves elite and dominant. The word Manu derives from that group and has been passed on to us in the form of man in the United States. Now, here is the etymology of the pronoun man. I have it here for you to see. And etymology simply means the root origin and trajectory through time of a word. And you can see here, it's rooted ultimately in the Sanskrit, manu. Okay, so do they have the same meaning? Is man defined the same way today that it was defined uh, in the ancient times? No, it's not. Manu is the Hindu god who, according to Hindu myth, as written in the law code of Manu and their other holy book, the Vedas, created skin color or varna castes, or we might say a social class, but it's different than class. Caste is a position in society which you are born into, you live in, and you die in. There's no possibility for you to have vertical mobility or to be demoted to a lower caste. Now, those books place black-skinned people at the bottom of the social hierarchy for the purpose of economic exploitation and genetic segregation. Now, this was the case in Hindu India, as it is today, unchanged. But why is the word man, let's take a step further, used in the Bible? Okay, now we know where it originated. We know it's an Aryan Sanskrit word, and we know that it refers to a mythological god that created the different caste out of its body parts, the head, the midsection, the legs, and the feet. Why is that in the Bible? Why are all the translations in English using the word man, if that is the meaning of it? That is a very good question. The word Manu is in the Bible because during the Bronze Age and the early Iron Age, the Indo-European cultures of Assyrians, Babylonians, Hyksos, Hindus of India, and Hittites were in continuous process of cultural diffusion or assimilation, meaning they were trading mythologies and technologies for hundreds of centuries. Now that includes the tribe of Judah, which was invaded by Babylon and held captive for many, many, many years. Now, the tribe of Judah assimilated the cultures of those different societies and included many of their myths in the Old Testament. And some, of course, flowed over into the New Testament of the Bible. So you're reading those scriptures without having a thorough knowledge of the meaning of the transliterated or translated terminology. And what is happening to you is that you're reinforcing your position in a global caste system. Now, African Americans having been slaves on plantations, which I called concentration work camps, under, should understand that. But of course, 80% of African Americans don't, they use words without critical examination. And so they reinforce their subjugation. You know, there's an old saying, free your mind and your body will follow. This seems to be the most difficult thing for African Americans to do is to free their mind because they don't generally show a concern for doing so. That's just the simple truth. Now, that's why you cannot just mimic what other people are saying, nor just pick up a book, read it, and think you know anything. 
because the chances are you don't. In fact, it would be safe for you to think the only thing I know is that I don't know. I am Dr. Stephen Nur Ahmed. Peace be unto you.